Hello, everybody. I'm very excited about this video because we're going to be talking to Lara, who's a researcher in museum studies. And Lara recently managed to write and submit a research paper to a journal in just four weeks. Sorry, three weeks. <laughs> three weeks, even, even better. I made a mistake, even faster, right? So what we're going to be doing is diving deeper into some of the strategies that helped Lara to do this. And hopefully there will also be helpful to to you out there so thanks a lot for being here Lara. thank you marek because uh, i mean due to your instructions and your videos i was able to struggle with challenges i faced during my phd for uh, writing new papers as well i had uh, some difficulties uh, to organize all my data because i had uh, so much data so so much information i had uh, so many ideas and results in my mind but it was uh, really difficult to me uh, to structure ideas in a meaningful manner for the reader um so it was uh, like finding something like very uh, helpful tool to organize my ideas in a proper manner okay and honestly i was uh, i just complained with myself that i uh, found out about you <laughs> and your instructions so so late because i mean uh, these instructions have been uh, uh, to me really helpful so much that i uh, was able to write new papers in three weeks you know what advice maybe would you give to people because i think maybe it's a common problem that like people conduct research and they have so much data and they don't know how to actually present it so what advice would you give in that case to to structure it logically and do it faster i i really realize i do realize that the path to write correctly academic papers is easier than we can think with your instructions how, what do you mean how come it's easy it's difficult i mean the fact that uh, uh, all researchers know uh, the data they gathered or, 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 okay the literature and on things uh, to uh, explain their research however it is not easy at all at all to organize uh, in the correct manner uh, all this uh, data, all this information. Um, so basically, these um, instructions enable researchers with uh, some patterns. Uh, so you can't miss your your goal with these instructions. I mean, it's something like a compulsory street a compulsory path that really helps researcher uh, to structure in the correct manner and i mean structure uh, for me is something like you know uh, providing the paper with the correct flow by a large uh, good organization of the paper so what i suggest is to follow this course okay to embrace uh, the the community because uh, i realized uh, honestly that uh, i wasn't uh, the only person in the world with this kind of problems all these red researchers have uh, some difficulties even if uh, they are you know professors uh, that mean prof professor year yeah, since uh, 10 years could you give like a specific example of that kind of roadmap because maybe to a lot of people it sounds like yeah i, I still don't understand what's that specific path that i can follow could you give maybe give an example of like i don't know one section of your paper that you know that helped you yeah, I, I mean, uh, for instance, uh, I had uh, some difficulties uh, regarding, you know, the methodology. Uh, so I discussed uh, this uh, uh, problem uh, in uh, a meeting because, uh, you know, we have at least uh, two meetings with Marek uh, and the community, uh, two meetings uh, for a week. Okay. Additionally, we have uh, the opportunity to message uh, 
other researchers' uh, text uh, and so on, or additional meetings. Uh, so to discuss uh, some things that, that we are challenging, okay? So I discussed uh, something about the proper met methodology. I found out something about, uh, you know, how to uh, gather some data uh, and I found out different methodologies. One of the calls I remember recently was it last week or two weeks ago. We were also discussing like this. writing paragraphs, right? Yeah, but we discuss also about ethics issues. That's true as well. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think, you know, a lot of people kind of sometimes have this idea that there can't be like a like one specific kind of roadmap that you can follow because different fields are so different that it's not going to work for me. Like a thing that I hear very often from people is like, oh, that's all well and good, but it's not going to work for me. Mm. Like, what would you what would you say to, to, yeah. to those people? Uh, I, I can say that absolutely some patterns for researchers applicable for anyone. Okay, obviously anyone has to introduce and discuss their specific information, literature and so on. However, in any uh, research, in any, in any paper, there is a, a, the same pattern, uh, the same structure, so introduction, methodology and any, any part uh, as uh, he's supposed to, uh, you know, to to be combined, so to ensure uh, the correct flow to facilitate the reader. We discuss uh, with Marek and all the community about, you know, practical matters, practical uh, issues like, um, for instance, I faced the problem about, you know, ethical issues. And I mean, it's just an example, but discussing with other researchers that faced the problem before me is something really helpful because uh, I can compare their situations with mine and I can, uh, in, I can find the, um, the suitable answer to my problems i'd like to add something more i had some problem about set english collocation in order to express my ideas in an academic manner something like you know lawyers or judge they they just can say okay uh, you are you have to go to jail no there are set you know, such expression, such collocation, English collocation. So it's something that I I found really helpful because uh, I need it. Like a couple of times you mentioned, you know, the the community and that, you know, you can chat to other researchers in the community or talk to them on like on calls twice a week. And like often as well, what I what I hear from people is that like they would rather, let's say, do kind of like one to one sessions all the time with someone. So what what, what benefits do you see of like having this community of other researchers and having like two, three, maybe five other researchers on those weekly calls? Well, is really helpful because I mean, we can uh, have the opportunity to compare uh, different uh, experience. And you know, research is uh, something uh, the, 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 the word research is something that you are researching something. Uh, so discussion is something like, you know, anyone put their own input, okay, and we build something together. Because that's another concern that often um, some people have, I suppose, like where you never kind of worried that, oh, if I mention this, then somebody might steal my idea, you know, if it's a, a group setting. Mm, honestly, no, because uh, I, I disagree with uh, this uh, standpoint because uh, we are somehow in the same situation and as a researcher we are all humble and open-minded to express our weakness and together we want to uh, discuss them and find solutions. And I think you know that uh, in how to say discussing weaknesses is something that make uh, people stronger because only if you face some challenges you can obtain your goal it is very difficult to sometimes to face your challenges right and yeah. to admit to that 
But honestly, the community is really a strong point of the program. For instance, uh, we compare the sources uh, for the literature, methodologies, and any kind of issue involving uh, research is really faced together. Coming back to like your amazing achievement of like writing that paper in three weeks, like what, what would you say you did or what helped you most, you know, and what, what advice would you give to other people who are maybe like struggling at the moment to, to write the paper? What helped me the most was, uh, you know, the fact that there were clear instructions I could follow. It was really like uh, being in a street you are provided with the correct direction and you can't go behind the street. It was really a clear path. And I suppose just to add to that analogy of a street, if you ever did go slightly off the street, then we could correct it during the, the calls and the feedback, right? To bring you back on track. Exactly. Another point, a strong point uh, of the program is that we continuously have feedback because, uh, I mean, obviously we have a clear instruction to do properly uh, papers. However, you know, uh, sometimes we do believe the flow is uh, perfect, okay, uh, but it is not. So it is uh, really helpful to make uh, your paper available to Marek and the community to receive feedback, to say, yeah, it is fine. However, I, I, it's not, this part is not so clear as you could think. Absolutely. And I think, you know, for a lot of researchers, it's difficult to get that feedback because you don't have like an immediate supervisor or you're just, you're often on your own. And when you have is something uh, uh, provided by, you know, journals that rejected your paper. So <laughs> basically is something really helpful so that you can submit good paper. Speaking of that, speaking of submitting papers, well, what, what's your plan for the next, let's say, nine months? What, what are you hoping to, to achieve? I've recently submi submitted another paper. I, I'm about to write another paper uh, connected to my PhD research. Okay. I think that uh, um, if I was able to write the last one in three weeks, I hope to write another paper in one month, okay? And then I'm going to write another another, another paper the next uh, month. I really think that uh, I, I've i met the program for me, yeah. That's fantastic. I'm very, I'm very happy to, <laughs> you know, to hear. And, and mostly, you know, I'm happy about the progress you've been, you've been making. That's, that's really great.